the board meeting. Thank you. Um, so we have, just so I understand who's here, we've got Usha, we've got Tom, we've got Jeffrey, Justin, Angelique, Nick, and Rebecca's not able to make it. So awesome, thank you all. Um, happy New Year, hope you all had good holidays. Um, so I have, um, I set an agenda, I altered it a little bit. So I'm gonna go over two quick housekeeping things. And then for our general business, um, we're just gonna talk about huts and roots, committee structures, and then the grant guidelines. Um, so those will be our three things. Um, so first thing, um, the BFJ, the consultants, are not totally done with the housing memos, um, mostly because our email is down for December. So I'm going to wait. Last meeting, we had talked about preparing. Um, I would prepare some more details about potential housing initiatives that we could hire consultants to continue, which is like an overlay zone. Um, I'm going to wait on that because we're going to wait until BFJ sends us their final memos so we can all discuss and look at that and then go from there on next steps. Um, so I'll share those later this month when I get them. And then the other thing I just wanted to get out of the way from the beginning is that February is the normal month, no holidays at the beginning. So our meeting will be the regular time, Monday, February 6th at 6 p.m. and we'll do a hybrid format again. And I have my newly acquired skill of operating the owl. <laughs> Tom told me to stop bragging. <laughs> okay, so that's our housekeeping stuff. Um, the next thing I wanted to get into was huts and roots. So that's our rental and mortgage um, emergency assistance fund. Um, I don't know if I had these numbers in early December, but uh, Greater Promise, Greater Hudson Promise neighborhoods shared their report. Um, they were able to help 21 households, which is a total of 52 people um, between, uh, between July and October. Um, and they did that with $21,000. Um, and all of those households are still stably housed. Um, and they were able to successfully work with the courts to help people stay in their housing. So we're really happy with how that work went. Um, at the December board meeting, you all voted um, to allocate 35,000 to Hudson Roots for this year. Um, HCDPA uh, was, um, we talked it over informally and they were on board with that. And they're gonna vote on that formally um, at their January meeting. Um, there's one change I wanted to bring up is that um, Joan Hunt, the director said that Hudson Roots is taking a little bit more of their staff time than they had originally thought. Um, they've been doing a lot of work of actually going to the courts and also hunting down landlords and talking with them. So she asked if they could have a 5% admin um, from the original amount. So you're looking at 1,750 would go to Promise and then the remaining 33,250 would go to direct payments. Um, I think that 5% is more than fair um, for the work they're doing, um, but I wanted to bring that up for you all to discuss. I don't have a problem with it. I'm in agreement. Okay. Yeah, sounds more than reasonable to me. Okay. Um, so then if someone wants to call a vote, we have to formally vote on that. But when you see administration the salaries? Yeah, that would just contribute to the salary time. So no one will do overtime on their own? No, yeah. Um, that's just the, I'm not sure how their, their works, but they seems like they're doing a lot of like legwork for this program, so. Um, I'm sorry, I think I missed someone say something online. Um, does anyone, uh, can anyone make a motion? Oh. Nick's hand's up. Nick's hand is up. Yes, Nick. I don't see that. Um, would anyone like to make a motion to vote on approving the 5% admin cost for HUT Promise? I'll make a motion to vote. Okay. Second. Thanks. Um, so I'll just do a quick roll call. 
Um, Usha? No. Okay. Um, Dustin? Uh, yes. Or I, I Jeff forgot, sorry. Jeffrey? Yes. Angelique? Yes. Tom Epstein's. Um, Rebecca's not here. And Nick? Nick, can you hear us? Okay. Right. Nick, can you hear us? Okay. Sorry, having trouble getting to my phone to unmute it. Okay. Press the right button. Um, and it is your vote. What's your vote? All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Um, so I'll send that to HCPA to look over. Um, next item was I want to talk about committee structures. So December meeting, um, folks had said that they were interested in going committee structures, the idea being that we could um, get some more work done in smaller groups um, and people, you know, it's easier to kind of schedule meetings with smaller groups. Um, and so I set the descriptions of the committees um, with the board packet. Um, are there any questions about that? Uh, Michelle, my question was how soon would you like us to make a selection uh, to choose what or, or when will, how soon will they be formed? So um, I was going to ask folks today what they're interested in, um, and then we can, you know, we can still piece things together in the coming weeks. The most important ones um, that I want to get rolling on in January is the funding and the strategic planning, um, the engagement and the grant awards that can wait a little bit till February. Um, or so, but hoping to get kind of at least a general understanding of who's most interested in committees um, today. So the quick review, the grant awards, um, that one will be working more on a first, a first review of applications. Um, that'll be a heavier workload in the spring. Um, and then just kind of checking in with grant awardees throughout the year. That one's a little less of a time commitment. Engagement, um, we'll be helping do outreach, help people learn about these grant opportunities, and then doing some engagement in the summer at in-person events or online. Um, so if you're someone who likes to be more involved in community stuff, this would be good for you. If you're around in person in the summer, that would be a good, good thing to be part of. Strategic planning will be heavier at the beginning of the year or the end of the year to help us make some goals, check in on our progress. Um, this is for folks who like data and word um, and writing. Um, and then funding, um, we're gonna kind of make a plan at the beginning of the year of what we wanna pursue for long-term funding strategies and then work on that throughout the year. And that'll be, that workload will really vary on what kind of what comes up. Um, so if folks are interested in grant writing or, um, you know, finance would be good for that. Um, so you're not locked into this, but if you want to give me a general idea what you're interested in, um, I know Justin said before grant awards and strategic planning. Is that still what interests you? Okay. Yes, please. Um, anyone else have any preferences that jumped out at them? I'm interested in the strategic planning and funding, but primarily strategic planning. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Engagement. Engagement. Awesome. Um, did you say like going back and checking on the grantees to see how they're doing during the year? Yeah, that'd be grant awards. I'm interested in that. Thank you. Um, Strategic planning. Okay. How about funding? No. I think I'm conflicted out of Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, anything for you, Nick? I think if I can, just because of everything I've got going on, new babies and everything that I'll, I may stay off of committees for right now, if that's okay. And then as time opens up and more capacity, I'll try to jump on one. Okay, congratulations. Right. Okay, cool. And then I'll talk to Rebecca. Um, awesome, okay. So um, the funding, so Jeffrey, I think Rebecca might be interested in the funding. So I'll talk with you all um, to kind of get rolling with that this month. Um, and then I'll also get in touch with 
Tom, Jeffrey, and Dustin about some, some basic strategic planning for 2023. Does that sound good? Yes. Cool. Okay. Thank you all. Um, and I think we'll see how it goes. We're still, we're still have our monthly meetings. We might find that one month or so we might not need it if the committees are really active, but we'll feel that out. Okay, moving along. Um, so the next, really the bulk of what I wanted to finish up for today is finishing out these grant guidelines. Um, so I will share my screens. So I can put them up there and then we have them in front of us. I also emailed them out. Um, so I basically took all our input that we had received um, previously from in-person meetings and I uh, made a second draft. So I kind of highlighted the key things I want to talk about today about the grant guidelines. Um, so let me, actually, I don't know if I can share my screen while the hour's on. Um, not sure if I can do that. I'm already sharing my screen. I don't know. Okay, well. Michelle, you can share your screen. It's, you just may not be able to see Zoom participants uh, okay. quite as large. Okay, what do I press? Press the share screen button. Okay, oh, okay. I overthought this. Okay, can y'all see the, the Word document? Yes, we're seeing it. Thank you, Michael. Okay, so um, let's start with this. This is the capacity grant form. So just as a reminder, this would be for organizations who are doing housing work that's not actual construction or rehab. So anything that's services to people, um, it could be, you know, home ownership um, grants, it could be, um, you know, like cuts and roots, other things that come up. Um, so uh, some of the changes I made, um, we talked about the 501c3 and the general feedback I had was that we want it to be open to non-501c3s, but to award more points to nonprofits. So that's in the first factor. Um, the second one, um, the second question I want to ask, we weren't, we kind of had some disagreement about, not disagreement, just in thoughts on whether we wanted to, um, on, on, on whether we wanted to prioritize groups that are working on new housing opportunities. Um, I'm not sure what you all think. Is that instead of um, helping people that already have existing housing? Yeah. That so, would go before. Yeah. So that's on the, the capacity one. Um, I'm on factor two. Right. Yeah. Don't you think that um, the intent should be with people that already have existing housing and see how successful we are there before we go into a building project? Um, so I guess what you're saying is like you don't necessarily see prioritizing new construction or rehab over, okay, gotcha. I mean, rehab. Rehab you would. Is, of course. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's that's one. Usha, in case you didn't hear her, Usha said um, uh, she doesn't think we necessarily should prioritize um, new housing um, and look at helping you know rehab projects or current uh, tenants or residents first. Any other input on keeping factor two or changing it? I'm I'm curious to hear. Um... Nick and um, um, forget your name, D Dotson's for John's uh, uh, feedback or thoughts there. Like, what would be pros and cons? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Looking for Nick and Jeffrey to weigh in. Okay. 
Uh, any thoughts, Jeffrey? Um, I don't necessarily have an objection either way, but to Usha's point, I guess, <clears throat> if there's something already existing, um, and, and I may have even be, I may even be changing my answer on this, but if there's something already existing and we can support that um, to get it up to a decent standard, that definitely should be a priority because new construction takes a little longer. Um, and the objective is to, you know, continue to keep people housed and safe and sanitary housing now. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that can, so we'll still touch new construction later, but if, we, if, if there are people preserving what we have now, I, I think that that would be uh, good. Okay. Any other thoughts? It sounds like we're leaning towards maybe taking this out. I, I agree with Jeffrey completely. Okay. Okay, and Tom agrees. So we'll take this factor out then. Cool. Okay, um, next. Um, so we had talked a little bit about um, the strategic housing action plan about whether or not we want those goals to be like guiding what we award points to. Um, and the thing, the reason I do this is because um, the strategic housing action plan was adopted by the common council. So that kind of gives us like a mandate of what direction we, we should be headed towards. And that's also how a lot of other trust funds award points. Um, so I think we should use the SHAP goals. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, do we want to prioritize some of those goals and do we want to, how do we want to do that? Do we want to say like, so um, So for example, I had attached those goals are on um, page four, five, and six of that capacity document. I'll scroll down on here. Um, so they, you know, it's preservation of housing, it's looking at homeowner rehab, ADUs, rehabbing. I think all of those are really um, important. We get into then like zoning policy. Some of these, you know, really are, I think, useful. Some mm -hmm. might. Um, Absolutely. Well, really yeah. Um, new housing options. I think all of these are pretty important to us. Um, and then the development programs and partnerships, some of them um, we've already done in the past couple of years since the um, SHAP. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of them, I think, aren't necessarily, um, they might not have to be a priority of this group. So for example, like park infrastructure is not necessarily a priority of the housing trust fund. Um, if we can like include parks in our work, that's great, but it's not, that's not our mandate or like working with, you know, um, so I guess, I think most of these are pretty good, but I guess just wondering what you all think about in terms of how to include these in the guidelines. So one way we could do it is we could say, does this project like clearly support or work towards a goal in the SHAP? Some housing trust funds say like, how many of these goals do you address? Um, that I kind of am ambivalent towards because you know you can say like, this is gonna help parks and this right. is gonna help That's this. Gonna help yeah, um, but so I kind of like doing one thing really well, then you shouldn't be counted that you're not doing five things poorly. <laughs> um, are there are there certain ones that we want to prioritize or that are more important? I think that's a good question. What do you all think? Just because I feel like if if there are, then I, I would I would rather we highlight that or somehow yeah. incorporate that into our evaluation. Yeah, I agree with uh, Dustin. We should go back and definitely right, but that we we look. Yeah. Okay. And then come back next month. Yes. Okay. Let's make it. Should we set a, a, a map that we? Yeah. Out, you know, most important. Yeah, I want to like say five. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? Any of the categories? There's a lot here. Okay. Um, we can let's say eight. Okay. <laughs> That's called negotiation. Yeah. Okay. So your homework is to pick eight um of these priorities. Um, and send them to me or text or whatever, them to me, and then we can figure that out for February. How's that sound? Cool. Works to me. 
but I said, well, you see how many there are. It seems it should be 10. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. 10. 10. Pick 10. Maximum. The maximum right. 10. If you think there's that like. like, you know, five that you're just. Yeah. Great, but okay. A little wee late. Okay, cool. So pick maximum 10 priorities, send them to me, and then we'll include that as a factor of whether this project is clearly supporting one of those yeah. um, shaft priorities. And that'll kind of guide us. Awesome. Okay, moving on. So if you have the paper, you can flip back. Um, so uh, let's see. So factor four, we're all good with. Factor five, we all liked. Factor six. Um, so basically with this one, I combined some of the other ones that we thought were poorly worded on the last draft. Um, the point of this was basically there was a fact there's a, a factor about is this helping a vulnerable population, um, and then there was one that was talking about would this pro like would there be negative impacts if we didn't do this project, and there was some input that that just kind of it's kind of a hazy question that sets you up for some poor answers. So I was thinking that this might um, kind of get at the point, which is like is this getting at something that's not being solved already. Um, or not being met. Um, the idea being, you know, someone else already doing this project um, is a seem redundant. Uh, so we can also take that out if you think that's not important, or we could put something in again about, you know, making sure this is all serving the best population. So the, the grant, like in the bylaws, we have to help people who are, you know, low to moderate income. But we could get more specific about, you know, helping seniors or helping, you know, maybe people who, you know, with you know, disabilities or returning citizens. Like if we wanted to get more specific or, you know, thinking about young homeowners or first time home buyers or, you know, um, maybe there's a group that's not being served. So do you think this is a necessary question? And if so, how would you change it? Well, I think when we uh, do uh, factor three, mm -hmm. six is going to become more apparent how to deal with it. Okay. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, I think I agree with Osh. Okay. Cool. So we will wait on step six until we handle three. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, six. Um, so then I deleted some of the ones we thought were redundant, um, and then we're ending at the seven for this one. And then we're, when we're all done, we can go back and figure out the total points. So we can do that in February. Um, so then moving on to the um, project award. Um, so let me pull up that one. <laughs> Okay. So similar thing where I incorporated the feedback from our December meeting. This is our new draft. It's a little simpler. Um, so we didn't have any comments about the first factor. Factor two and three, I want to know whether you think this is redundant or important. So again, our bylaws say we have to help households at or below 80% of AMI with um, at least half of that going to households at or below 50% AMI. So automatically you have to be, you know, to be eligible, you have to meet that AMI level. Um, so, some other housing trust funds, they like give more points to, um... so this question is asking like out of the project that you're doing. So again, this is new development or rehab. It's, it's really asking like what percentage of the people in this project are at or below 80%. So for example, if you had like a 10 unit building and only one unit is for someone who's lower moderate income, would that be the same as you're looking at, you know, a 10 unit building that's 100% lower moderate? That's what it's getting at. Um, we could also make this, if we think this is redundant, we could find a different way of asking it. So that's factors two and three. Sorry. Uh, 
I don't see what's wrong with keeping it as is. Yeah. Okay. I think I probably would have known when I first read it, but it seems okay. 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 Um, thank you. Yes. Um, so everyone felt good about four and five. So then six, um, it's a repeat of what, six and seven, we just had the same conversation on the last page. So we already discussed those. Mm -hmm. Um, so then, okay, factor eight is about cost effectiveness. So what I want to get at that in that question is whether this is an like a efficient project. And we're supposed to determine that before it happens? Well, yeah, like if someone's looking at some kind of, um, if, they, if they're looking for an actual development, new construction, they should be far enough along that we can look at right. your basic pro forma and look at, you know, so for example, I like, I've seen some, it's like, and I think it's it's not just is the project itself cost efficient, but also the amount we're giving in cost efficient. I think Jeffrey made this point the last meeting that it's like, if you're giving a small amount of money, um, you know, what's it going to do? If you're giving a lot amount of money, you want to see it go pretty far. Right. So it's kind of that, that ratio between the ask of the amount and what's going to actually accomplish. Yeah. Um, so I think this is an important question. I do. I, I think like if it's the first one, it's like almost automatically no. You know? Right. <laughs> right. I guess the question is, am I asking it in the right way? Right. And is it clear or is there a better way I should be saying this? No, but I guess I wouldn't even put zero to two. Just zero. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> yeah, it's just zero. Michelle, can you put that question on the screen? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, so it's factor eight. I guess looking at what's the best way to ask this question. And I know I have a typo there. So the idea being that the project budget is self-efficient and that the amount of money you're requesting would accomplish the maximum amount of, uh, you know, effect or progress. Would it be appropriate to ask what percentage of the funds will go to that, that specific goal? Maybe that can glean the answer we're looking for? So I think, yeah, so I think definitely like, so my idea was that we'd make these guidelines and rubrics and then I'd like reverse engineer the actual application um, to make sure we're asking the questions that would yield these responses. So I think that's something we'd ask in the application to show what are the funds actually being used for. Okay. Um, and what, you know, what would it, so, so for example, like um, I think when we're looking at development, obviously we're not gonna have enough money to create something, mm -hmm. but this money I think is really helpful in the beginning of soft costs of, you know, it's a lot of like helping secure other grants or helping secure engineer architecture fees or stuff like that. And I think if you're showing like, okay, we need a little, this little bit for like land acquisition and then we'll be able to move forward in creating X, Y, Z number of units or rehabbing X, Y, Z number of units. Um, we'll have a sense of like this amount of money yields this many new housing units. Versus if someone wants like $100,000 for one unit, that's not a great use of the money. So it may be some type of per unit cost at, uh per unit cost calculation like yeah yeah how, mu how much you, how, what, what are you going to get from this and like you said if it's soft costs and this is a program that we want to support because it's ultimately going to impact um our uh residents in the city in a positive way and, and and create more affordable and low income housing then you know to and it's going to create 10 units then that may be a yes but we have to figure out some way to quantify it Okay, cool. I like that per unit cost 
I also think this is making me think too that I'm not quite sure how to go about doing this, but somewhere in the application, like we're not going to want to put in money to half baked ideas, right? Because you can definitely see like someone wants money for acquisition or architecture, but then they don't actually buy the property. Mm. And we have to kind of claw it back. And so I think with these development projects, we need to see a certain amount of progress in the actual ideas or um, funding sources or something. Right. In other words, definitely agree. Yeah. I mean, there are soft costs and there are soft costs. Yeah, <laughs> they're super soft. Right. Costs. They're super soft. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm going into this knowing that we might not have a lot of applicants the first year or two. Mm -hmm. Um, because we just don't have a lot of this work necessarily happening. Um, but like we said, like we're working on building capacity of our, you know, local developers and you know, small, you know, rehab and nonprofits and stuff. Mm -hmm. So okay, well, you guys got through everything. Does anyone want to share other thoughts um on the grant guidelines? The other thing I'll say is that we don't have to weight all these factors equally. Um, so I think we discussed this, that this would be, um, the um, this would be like a, I would not be involved in the scoring. I'd work with the applicants to help them develop their application and make sure everyone, you know, really understands and meets the eligibility requirements. Mm. And then you as the committee would go through and actually score them and um, you know, provide your recommendations to HCPA to approve. Um, but I just scrolled up to like the actual like points. So these are the factors. They don't have to all be the same weight. Right. Um, so I think the length of affordability is pretty important. Um, and I think, but we can change this. So this is something for you to think about if you guys wanna make some more points than others, or if you think they're good all being equal. Because we can make you know experience more, we can make cost effective more, thoughtful or. Michelle, I almost feel like it could be helpful, like if we have a meeting slash discussion on what we, what our values are, because I think mm -hmm. that like as a team and as a group, and then yeah. I think that the questions or these decisions will naturally stem from what we value or what we think would be achievable as a group if that makes right. sense because I don't that think that because yeah. I feel like a lot of these things are important to discuss and I I certainly get the need for us to make a decision but I think that as a group or a collective I think it'll be helpful for us to say you know these are the two things we value in this work for this period of time and then we could you know that those decisions will come naturally although you know of course we could individually and collectively just make a decision now and on these yeah. things, but I think that could be helpful at a maybe at a future meeting. Okay, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Um. So I'll when I send the follow up email um tomorrow or Friday, I'll just kind of highlight that um and then along with the the shop strategic housing action plan items, so we can think about that a little bit more and talk about that in February. Um. Cool. So any last thoughts on grant guidelines? Okay, awesome. So thank you very much. That was really productive. Um, we are done early. Um, so I guess the one thing I wanna just say is that in terms of what I'll be working on for you all in the next month, so I'll send this email out about thinking about priorities in terms of the SHAP and then also in terms of like values. Um, and so then we can have that discussion for February. Um, I'm also gonna try and see about getting our plan together for how to get um, people to like know about this, yeah. to get good applications in terms of outreach um, and looking at maybe some best practices for whether there's, um, I've been trying to um, get some more information about what other grants for like smaller developers um, or smaller rehab stuff. Um, and maybe do like a info session before leading up to the application. So people might get some mm -hmm. ideas. 
So I'll be working on that as well. And then I can also finish up um, kind of like a, a, a gentle, abbreviated kind of strategic plan for this year, um, since our first right. year. Sounds perfect. So that's what I'm working on. Um, before I open up to the public, I just want to see if any other um, board members wanted to share um, thoughts or comments. Michelle, I just want to say I appreciate your leadership and, and your hard work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you all being here and all the thoughtful comments. Um, okay, then I see uh, Dominic has a hand. You want to share your thoughts, Dominic? Yeah, quick question, just um, for clarification. Um, does this board also do open meeting laws? Is there a quorum present in public? Is this a legal meeting? So we're not um, subject to open meeting laws the same way that um, the same way that like we're not ACPA, we are gotcha. like a committee that's not subject to the laws. So Chris, she also wants to follow that. Um, we'd follow it the best as possible in terms of like posting minutes and agendas afterwards and having a hybrid so people can participate, but um, we don't have to do all the same open meeting things. Great, so the video, the, the what we follow doesn't apply uh, because you're technically not a board how that works we are a committee gotcha perfect yeah. great mm -hmm. i just I, that's good i got a couple uh texts so i was just I figure i asked for clarification which is great thanks guys awesome. mm -hmm. um any other thoughts in public no okay well it is 6 45 so let y'all out a little bit early thank you all and uh yeah have a wonderful evening have a good night. Have a great good night. night.